what do you know quick share quick share is like it's like a child that you see growing up it's like wow they've come so far <laughs> so far no little johnny's grown up to be such a big uh, a nice looking young man oh quick share has grown up to be a nice looking boy man let me tell you he's a handsome little fella right there so quick share used to be like a throwaway app quick share used to be a samsung exclusive application um and google had something similar called nearby share that sucked uh never used uh, used liking it now quick share that was samsung only and nearby share similar in the way it transferred files but different in how it did it so quick share uses a combination of bluetooth and wi-fi if you're if you're uh, using wi-fi nearby share was bluetooth strictly now about a year ago samsung and google i don't know how they uh structured the partnership or i don't know if google purchased quick share from samsung but now quick share and nearby share merged and now everything is just called quick share now they merge technologies too so it's way better than it used to be and now quick share is not just on samsung devices it's on all devices all devices running in any version of android so chrome os if you have a chromebook it's got nearby share if you have a pixel phone it comes with nearby share if you have a Samsung Galaxy phone, it comes with quick, uh, uh, a quick share, and it uses the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi technology. So, I, it's gotten a lot better. I rarely have any failures when I transfer files. Cool thing is too, you can transfer a whole movie if you wanted to, or a video, um, and you can close out. I mean, you can swipe it away and go to another application, and it still works in the background. Now. Google is going to bring QuickShare to iOS devices. Yay! So basically, QuickShare was the AirDrop version. For all your iPhone users out there, I know you're like, what the hell? QuickShare is the Android equivalent of your AirDrop, right? So you can send photos to any Android user. If you're using Android and you want to send so another Android user a uh, the latest ECM Studios video or a link or a picture, take pictures of your kids at the Halloween party and you want to send it to your wife, you can send it quick share if she's got Android. Um, you, you can send anything, any file, right? Just like AirDrop. You can pictures, videos, uh, GIFs, links, uh, text. You can copy and paste text. That was the AirDrop equivalent, but for Android. Now, we have QuickShare coming to iOS devices, not just iPhone, all iOS. So that means Google and Samsung are going to collaborate on building in a QuickShare iOS application. So you will be able to find the QuickShare application in the, uh, in, excuse me, in the Apple App Store. You will be able to use it for iPhone. You'll be able to use it for MacBook. You'll be able to use it for iPad. Um, anything. So that's good because I feel like Google's doing way more trying to bring people, pair people together than Apple. Apple is never, ever going to give up iMessage. And I know they merged iMessage with RCS to make integration a little bit better for Android users. It still sucks. It was like a false flag. Like, oh yeah, we're going to integrate RCS. It still sucks. Anyways, that's a whole other video. So, Apple will never give up FaceTime to Android users. Apple will never give up, fully give up iMessage to Android users. Apple will never ever... Uh, what do we got? Uh, FaceTime, iMessage, and AirDrop are three things Apple holds on to, and they hold on to dearly. They know... Apple knows that's those three essential features are what keeps a lot of iPhone users using using iPhone. All right, those are their probably their three best features they have to offer, and they will never ever give in to Google. So Google is and Samsung are actually making the effort. Okay, so because file sharing, yo, since I've had this iPhone, I don't hardly pick it up because I hate to use it file sharing is a pain in the ass using it is a pain in the ass um and i don't i don't 
look, I don't use iMessage because everybody, I don't, nobody I know uses iPhone. All my, my whole family uses uh, uh, Android. My parents, well, my dad uses Android. My mom, she died. She used Android. My sister uses an iPhone. That's the only, I don't really have any friends. All I do is work and that's about it. <laughs> work and YouTube. It's like, I don't really have any like close friends that have iPhones. My sister has an iPhone and that's it. So I could give two shits about using an iPhone. But file sharing is one of, and I'm in the process of making a video. File sharing is one of the biggest uh, issues between sending a file from an Android phone to an iPhone. Pain in the ass. Pain in the ass. There we go. Now it works. Pain in the ass. Google's taken that extra step and now it won't be. So I don't believe QuickShare will be pre-installed on all, on all iPhones. I believe you're going to have to go download QuickShare in the Apple App Store, but iPhone users, please, please, please download this app. It'll make everybody's life a lot easier. Not now. They're in the process of making this application. Um, it's not available just yet, but um, I believe in around the first quarter. Let me pull up my website. I have the info there. So if you go to eSimStudios.com, and I'll put the link in the, in the uh, video description here. Um, let's see. What is going on here? I'll put a link in the video description and uh quick share so google and samsung should have this up and running in 2025 it says for for ios mac os uh so it'll be available for all apple products this will be the only legitimate way to share files between an iPhone or an iOS device and an Android device. Since Apple is not going to make a AirDrop uh, app for Android, Google says, well, then we'll take our file sharing app and, and uh, upload an, an application on the um, Apple App Store for so file sharing can be a much easier and nicer process because it's complete and utter bullshit how the division is too far, it's too wide. And I hate that the fact that it's like one or the other, it's like Republican or Democrat, iPhone or Android, and there's nothing in between. I don't like that. I wish there was a third party uh, in the United States. I wish there was another third party um, operating system that was popular, right? Um, it's just one or the other. And, you know, it's just button heads. Uh, for people that use the MacBook but have an Android phone, it's going to make life a lot easier. For people that have a Windows device and also have an iPhone, it's going to make things a lot easier. So uh, I'm going to be very, very happy that they're coming out with this, and I'll keep all I'll keep everybody posted on uh, the development of this application. I'll keep everybody up to date on when we can expect this. Right now, it looks like we're looking at a launch date of mid to early 2025 which seems like a long time but it'll be here it's right around the corner 2025 is going to be here before you know it um and then you have what probably january february march april uh, four or five months uh something like that and then we should have this so uh, look i dog people out and companies out when they deserve it when they do uh, make bonehead decisions in products, but I also praise uh, people. Now it may seem more like pro Google or pro Android, which probably, honestly, I think I am. Um, and I've praised Apple in the past for doing stuff that I think is is good or cool. Uh, I love to troll Apple. Don't get me wrong, but I'm not a uh, I'm not the typical. The fanboy, right? Like, like, uh, how there's Apple fanboys. I'm not the typical, uh, Pixel fanboy, although I, I, we are Team Pixel. But, uh, when they do stupid shit, I'm gonna let you know, right? It's, I'm just giving you my honest opinion. Um, this is gonna be, um, 
I think people are going to underestimate how big um, of a move this is because Apple does not want compatibility. I know they say they do. Apple does not want compatibility. Apple's very cutthroat. They want you buying and using only Apple products, um, period. They think uh, Android is trash. They that ugh, walk around with with their with their nose up. They they look at my my Pixel phone as a piece of shit when actually it's better than the freaking iPhone. Um, you get the point. Um, so that's why at Google needs to be praised for doing this. Samsung got to be praised for doing this because it's these two companies that are that have teamed up but are teaming up and working on this project to make sure that a good file sharing app an official i know there's third-party crap out there but you always you always wonder about using third-party crap right uh, but this will be official official tissue and i uh, very happy to see it so um i will bring you all of the info i'm going to keep an eye on this i know I'm, it's obviously not going to have daily updates but every you know probably once a month or once every two months uh i'll get a i'll get some info on this and see where where we are on this uh application what time is it i got to get out of here in a few minutes uh what else did i have google messages upgrades so if you're unaware i was i was messaging this morning and i was looking at my phone like like what something looks different in the mess you know when you're using it and you're like something looks a little weird um anyways google messages for uh for uh android users out there there is a new messages that's going to change a little bit the way things look so they changed their read receipts uh do i have a photo for you i don't at the moment but um you know what look can you let me see if i can show you this look at look at their read receipts You see in the blue? Sorry, it looked a little blurry, but uh, yeah, for Android users, read receipts were, were always typically underneath the message. So if you type out, I typed uh, I typed out WTF, right? And then normally when the re when when the person that gets that WTF, all know that they read it from. There used to be two little circles under the message I sent. And then w with their hollow, that means the recipient did not read it. When they fill up and they're blue with a check mark, that means the person that got them, saw them, got the message and saw the message. Now the read receipts are inside the text bubble, right? So they're inside the text bubble. Um, and we have some other upgrades here as well let me show you let me show you so now i'm on the beta version so you can actually go to google messages in the play store and underneath the description it'll say do you want to install the do you want to get into the beta program of google messages i am so if you're in the stable build or maybe you don't know what you what you have go to your app store play store and install uh, uh, uh go to the google messages app and then it'll tell you if you're if watch this if you're if you have google messages uh beta installed it'll tell you watch damn why is it so blurry it'll say beta right there now, I'm on the beta, which means I'm gonna get the latest release, the testing build. Basically, they test the features out first before they officially roll it out, stable build. So if you wanna enroll into the beta Google Messages, you will see that. Now, you, what you're also gonna see is you're now gonna be able, uh, in Google Messages, you will soon, Messages will soon let you choose photo resolution before sending it. So if you want to send a video super fast, you might not want to choose 4K mess, you know, 4K video because it's going to take more data and more a uh, little longer to send. Uh, it'll give you a couple different options. So 
Google Messages will soon let uh, will soon allow users to choose photo resolution when sending a message. New high definition and high definition plus icons will be available in the photo picker. So when you go to messages and you hit the plus logo to attach a photo or video, um, now it'll tell you if you if you'll be able to send it in HD or HD plus. I'm assuming HD probably 720p. I would think it's 10 1080p, and then uh, HD plus would be uh 1280 or i don't know something like that the hd plus option sends images in original resolution but uses more data as i mentioned this feature is similar to whatsapp photo sending options they whatsapp recently updated their application and now you can choose if you want to send a regular resolution or you want to send the original resolution so that means if you have a original reg resolution photo or a quick video in 4k it's going to send it in 4k right um but um now when is this rolling out let's see this update will enable users to send photos either uncompressed or at lower quality similar to feature that uh, uh, whatsapp just updated theirs in the latest beta version of messages users will see the new icons in the photo picker the hd option will sacrifice image quality for faster sending and reduced data usage while the HD Plus option preserves the original resolution but requires more data, it takes longer to send. The choice made by the user will be indicated by the respective icon and check mark. So be on the lookout for that. I have a hard out here and I got to run. I have a video conference here in five minutes that I must prepare for. So I do appreciate the time. Thank you for joining me today on eSIM Tech News. Brian, thank you for stopping by. Thank you very much. And I'll put links for uh, uh, my news blog there down uh, in the video description. And as always, I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.